these are the main highlights of the Prognosis Occupational Health EHR. Our first highlight is the Prognosis Employer Portal, which gives you the ability to give employers access to your employee records or your patient records. An employer will go to the Employer Portal and log in by using a username and password. The first time that employer logs in, it gives them an opportunity to reset their password so the password is secure. When they log in, there are multiple tabs viewable at the top. Depending on the access that you gave that particular user, they will either have one, two, three, or four tabs here. The first tab are the clinic shared documents. In this list are all the patients that are attached to that particular employer. They can search for those employees here, or they can select specific documents and view them. The next tab is the billing tab. This tab gives them the ability to see the list of their invoices by multiple different means. We also can see the payments that have been made by that employer in the past. They can see an aging, and we even have the ability to integrate a third-party credit card processing vendor and give them the ability to make payments within the employer portal, which will then flow into your PM system in the EHR. You can give them the ability to maintain their own list of users. So for our uh, employer here, which is called Aero Industries, this is the list of all of the employees at that company that have access to the employer portal. So each of these individuals have their own unique login, and you can give each of them different login credentials depending on their position and their need for access to the system. You can also have a list of the employees that are attached to that company. This is really helpful for something like drug screen randomization where you want to make sure that all new employees are added to the system in a timely manner. The employer can come here and add a new employee. They can also see all of the employees that are attached to their practice and they can inactivate them right here in the system. So if they need to remove them from the next drug screen randomization, they can. Employer users can also change their password, and you also have the ability to brand this employer logo, this employer portal with your logo and your practice name here at the top. So for our next feature, we're going to log into the EHR as opposed to the employer portal and look at a few features there. The first feature we're going to look at are employer protocols. And what our employer protocols do is give the practice the ability to set up a lot of different parameters for each specific employer. So this screen is called our configuration screen, and each of these highlights have a lot of setup for the particular parts of the system that you're looking for. And in this case, we're going to go into the employer section and pull up our Aero Industries. In this particular area, we have just different details about the company, their address, their phone number. You have the users that have access to the employer portal. So these are the same people that we saw listed in the employer portal. So if you don't want to give the employer the ability to edit this, you can edit this yourself right here. And you can determine what types of access that they have the ability to look at. And it's as simple as turning those things off if you don't want them to access something. So super simple. And you can inactivate a user right here. You have the ability to send things to what we call medical review. So if you have a practice or an employer who doesn't want to log into the employer portal but wants to receive the documents at the end of the visit, you can put that person in the medical review section and you can give them a, an email address or a fax number and it will send the patient's uh, progress note and records via email, secured email or fax at the end of the visit as opposed to them having to log into the employer portal. We also have a protocols area which gives you the ability to have different types of protocols based on that particular employer's needs. So when you set up these protocols you can determine whether you have lab orders that need to be done, radiology, procedures, 
Uh, specialty forms, which can be questionnaires, like a fit for duty questionnaire, vaccinations, physical exams. So you can put a combination of different types of services into each protocol so that when an employee with that particular employer comes into the facility, you attach a protocol to that appointment so that you can see what needs to be done. When you attach that protocol to the visit, it will populate all of these items automatically in the visit for you. You also have the ability to set what type of workers comp insurance they should have, add some notes in several different places so that you can see something specific for that employer. You can restrict what types of encounters are available for an employer and our encounter types are really dynamic and they give you the ability to preset things ahead of time. For instance, an encounter that is a work comp based encounter will automatically have a work comp claim as opposed to an employer based encounter which will, will be billed as an invoice so you can preset some of those things and if you don't do one or the other type of service for a particular employer you can restrict what they can schedule for. You also have the ability to set up all of their billing parameters here so here you can actually see the employer's account so very similar screens that we saw in the employer portal we can see all the different invoices for that particular employer and an aging right up here at the top. And then you can also split the claims. So if an employer utilizes a TPA, for instance, for their drug screens, you can set things up to automatically split the claim up so that all of these codes would go to a separate TPA, a separate claim to align a separate claim here to eScreen. So if these codes are within an encounter, it's going to take these codes, put them on a completely separate claim automatically, and then anything else is going to stay on the original claim. You can also split everything that would always go to work comp. And then if you have an employer that has their employees pay for services, you can automatically split specific codes to the patient if the employer is never going to pay for them. You can also determine what type of invoice and you can have multiple different templates of invoices or invoices are pretty flexible. So if you have an employer that needs to add specific things like a job number to their invoice or they want to charge hide the charge codes, you can uh, set that up. We have scheduled processes that automatically send out employer invoices via email. So if you put an email in this and check this box, when that parameter says that the invoices should run, it'll automatically submit all of the employee invoices that you have marked as ready to be sent. And then finally at the bottom you have the ability to set any number of fee schedules that you want to. You can have one master employee employer fee schedule and give discounts if necessary or each employer can have their own fee schedule. It's totally up to you. And we have the ability to set up custom codes and things like that if you bill specific codes that are maybe not the standardized CPT codes to your employer customers. So that's a quick summary of the employer protocol section. Next we're going to talk about drug screen randomization. So back in our settings and configuration area we have a feature called scheduled processes. This is the same area where we would set up our employer invoices to go out but another nice feature that we have in this area are our random drug screens. And it's not aesthetically pleasing to look at in a demo, but I can just kind of give you a description of what this does. So what the drug screen randomization does is it gives you the ability for each employer that you want to set randomization up for to give it a scheduled frequency. You can decide when you want to start running it. You can put a message in that they're going to receive when this gets executed. You can message it to someone within the system or also email it to a particular employer. You can determine when you want it to run. You can mark it inactive if it is not going to be run anymore. And then behind this little parameters button is where you choose all of the different parameters based on how you want to run it. So what percentage of drug and alcohol you want to include in this randomization, what employer, so here's our list of all of our employers that are in the system that this pertains to. We have patient types that you can set up. So if there are different types of patients that get different protocols within a particular employer, you can um, separate those patients out by the patient type and set up a randomization for each one. You can determine whether the system is going to make a list of employees that need drug screens or alcohol screenings or actually have the system create appointments. And then you can determine what provider those appointments go under if necessary, what location, what visit type. And then you can also say what times of the day those appointments can be scheduled for. 
And then here's where we determine whether the employer receives an email with the list of either employees or a list of the appointments that are scheduled. So once this is set up to run, it will run indefinitely based on the scheduled date here. So each time it runs, it will uh, run based on the parameter that you set here, just continually until you inactivate it. The next feature to talk about are DOT drug screens, and we also have an upload interface to the FMCSA database. So at the end of your encounters, your DOT drug screens will be automatically sent. So in our OCMED area, we have a couple different formats that you can use for DOT forms to input those. So our 5875 here, we have a template-based version where the employee would fill out their section of information and then the provider would come through and here's the employee's answers here and then the uh, examiner would document all the information and when you preview it looks like the DOT standard form. We also have the, the uh, uh, MCSA 5876 form, which is the little card that they put in their wallet. We have the ability to have the provider signature and their certification number and everything automatically entered from the system. And then we can push this into an area that we call legal documents, uh, which is also a helpful area for you to be able to give your employer employees the ability to sign documents electronically, either on a tablet uh, with what we call pro Pro sign or prognosign or on the pro check-in uh, tablet as well. And then we also have another interface called Doctor Forms. So if you don't like that template version where you scroll through, you can actually fill a version out that looks more like the DOT form that you're used to seeing. And these get updated every time there's a change from the DOT. I believe there's an expiration date that just got updated, so this form will be updated very soon. Uh, and again, at the end of the visit, if you have the FMCSA upload, if you choose for that interface, this will be automatically uploaded for you and you'll get a message if there is a, an exception to the upload so you'll know whether it went through or not. The next feature is lab and radiology review. So as you send lab orders into the system, we have a, an area called CPOE, which is, uh, which is computerized physician order entry. And when you click this button, it will populate all of your open lab orders. And when results come back into the system, they go directly into the patient's chart and then also go to an area called review. And they also come to these little bubbles up here. So if you're a provider, you'll have these little bubbles. The blue one is lab and the red one is radiology. And when you click that bubble, it will take you into the list of lab results that you need to review. So once you review those lab results, they fall off this list and out of your bubble, but they stay in the patient's chart and they're already in the patient's chart as we speak. One nice feature is that you can see side-by-side -side results. So if a patient has had a test multiple times, so they've passed all of their 10 panel drug screens and here's the dates that we've done them. You can, uh, and that doesn't just apply to drug screens, hem panels, CBCs, any other tests that they've had previously will show in that screen. When you are ready to document that a result is reviewed, you can simply mark it reviewed and it'll fall off this list. But if you want to add some comments like it's normal, you can add that in there and save it. And in the next office visit, if you want to add this entire lab to it, it's one click to add the whole lab, including your comment. You can also assign a task to someone within the clinic. So if you need them to call the patient, give them some information, you can. You can inform the patient on the patient portal. Uh, some of our employer uh, employee health clinics will utilize that as an employee portal. Um, so you have the ability to correspond with the employees or the employer patients, depending on your practice, directly within the patient portal, not only on this tasking system, but also with patient messages. Um, you can also create a follow-up lab order. So if this is a drug screen, you want to order a confirmation test, you can come in here, pick which lab you want to order, pick which test you want to order for them, and it'll be saved right there in the patient's chart.
Um, one other nice feature in this screen is if you work at a practice and you are uh, filling in for a physician that's on vacation, if you access this screen under the lab review bubble here, you can see all of the provider's tests and even search for specific provider's tests here. And then another nice thing is that you can see just the abnormal tests. So if I just want to find all of the lab tests that have an abnormal flag and I want to review those first. When I check that abnormal box, it just filters down to the one that have something checked positive or, or abnormal there. Next feature is workers comp case management. So within our system, we have a case management button in several different spots. You can access it from the patient register. You can access it from within the uh, patient's chart in a couple different places. So here is our patient register. This little uh, briefcase is the case management button. Each patient pull up someone that has a couple of cases there, can have multiple cases. So instead of having to have two separate charts for a patient that has multiple cases, you can have multiple cases. And in each visit, you're going to attach the particular case that applies to that particular visit so that you can keep the document separate, the billing separate, everything stays separate based on the case number being attached to the visit. Within the case screen, you can store lots of information. Obviously, the things that need to go on the claim, if this is work comp, like the date of injury, if you put the body area in here, it adds to this little search area here so you can easily pick the case based on the body part rather than the number. Um, you can attach the insurance company that's associated to it, add pre-authorization numbers if necessary, uh, put any kind of contacts in there, uh, attorneys or case management managers. Uh, if you're doing any kind of personal injury and have liens, you can attach that information here. You can see a ledger of anything that has been billed. You can print out a statement. You can see a history of who has edited the case. And then you can mark a case close and mark a date here and then put in notes once the case is completely closed. And then if there's not a field for what you want to add, we can add up to, I believe, 10 different fields in this area under the user definable fields. And these are just fields that we created, um, but you can create those fields, have different types of fields like a date field or a drop down or um, multiple choice here based on your particular practices preferences. And then the final uh, feature that we're going to talk about today is over on our billing or PM side, and that's bulk claims for on-site screenings or vaccinations. So if you have the need to create multiple claims at one time, we have a feature that gives you the ability to create identical claims on the same data service with the same service attached, but different patients. So the way to do that is to go to the claims area. So this is our PM home screen, and you would go to the new here and then choose bulk claims. And so what this is doing is it's giving me the ability to add multiple patients. So I can come in here and put my patients from Aero Industries and this is going to list all of my Aero Industries patients. So when I'm ready to add these claims, I just choose everyone I want to add a claim for. I can say what my data service is, what location that was done at if necessary. I can say who my rendering provider is. I can also say a referring provider if that's applicable. I can pick an encounter type. So in this situation, I'm picking a claim type that does not also create an EMR encounter. I can pick which ICD code I want to utilize. I can pick my CPT code that I want to utilize. Maybe we did TB skin tests, and let's see if I can, if I have COVID back. Preferred list, not on my preferred list, but they're in my all list. Oh, and I forgot that we have specific ones for specific. Oh, let's just pick one. Okay, and so uh, if I need modifiers, units, any of that sort of thing, I can select those there. And when I hit the OK, it will automatically create claims for each of those employees that I uh, selected and uh, the additional information that I added, such as my ICD codes, my CPT codes, will all then be saved directly within the system. So 
here are all of the claims that I just created at the top there. So that is a brief highlight of the occupational health uh, highlights of our system and the best features. We have lots of additional features. We encourage you to schedule a full demo of our software to see all of the additional features that could apply to your practice.